Feels like the theme song for this series where EDG finally fight back. A game two they can be proud of in a game two. We're now sooning, find themselves up in an even match once again. Hello and welcome back to LPL Playoffs. The very start here in round one with EDG and sooning. I'm Hysterics, this is Clement. And Clement, back to square one. Yeah, but a much better game coming in from Jija, though. That's what Thank we have to God. mention. That first pick is finally paying out. I yeah. was very confused by why they weren't taking away the Akali. Jija proved that EDG had a point. I mean, that Gragas looked great in game two, much better. I know uh, Jija also gets MVP if you were confused there. So this time around, you don't take away from the damage. You go, well, that's a low damage taken, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't about taking damage for the Gragas. Uh, that's actually very little damage taken. That's, that's the point. It's 5%. Uh, yeah, I, know, I know, but uh, he did his work on the carrying side, you know. Great finds on SMLZ, great initiations, and he really patched up all the doubts that we had mm. coming in from game one. True. We were talking about, you know, what happens if Mako can't come out of lane, who's going to fill that initiation role for, uh, for EDG? And JJ steps up to the plate. Great fadeaway jumper right there. Tags Maple. But then, I know you love this, Clem. <laughs> this is when we turn into the JJ <laughs> versus SMLZ hype show. I know, this, this is just Ready? hilarious. This is a personal vendetta. Just to start from this clip. Oh, SMLZ no. taking a casual stroll <laughs> underneath the tower. <laughs> JJ's like, give me. And then there's the and one coming in. Ready? And there's even more. There's more. <laughs> JJ has been keeping his eyes on Tasuni's main damage dealer in SMLZ. SMLZ never had a comfortable time to deal damage throughout this game, too. <laughs> and it really made a huge amount of difference here. Just... JJ SMLZ... started it off. Jinu finished it. <laughs> That's a great alley-oop if I've ever seen one. SMLZ demands protection. That he does. Do we get another one? I can't remember. Yes, we get another one. Oh, my God. Wait, there's JJ. Look, SMLZ. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even use That's the ult. That's great. That's great. No, he just destroys him. <laughs> like, this is why I love AP Gragas. You're like, oh, actually. That was really personal. That was yeah. incredibly targeted. Five times. So. That was also Jinu. how SMLZ Jinu, got his, uh, his zero 5. Yeah, because like four or five of the kills were all from JJ. So great target selection from EDG, and it was more the decision making, the shot calling that really formed up their second game. Extremely great highlights, and this is also the reason I say SMLZ, uh, not SMLZ Ooh. and SUNY, excuse yep. me, yep. are going to move back, back towards <laughs> protecting the hyper carry type of composition. That's I think true. that's a good step for them to take. Realizing EDG has awoken on the top side means that you're not going to get that 1 3 1 composition that you want. It's much better to then focus down on SMLZ as your hyper carry, yep. who has been carrying you throughout the entire I season. do like that this series has changed back and forth. So yes. Game one was very much about the bottom lane. Game two, the bottom lane was nullified and a little bit more stable. We went to the solo lane in Juno, and EDG from there finally had their moments of bliss where now we can rely on Juno a little bit more and look at Scout and how he fits into that puzzle piece that we always mention. Definitely. I think Scout, this series, he's been great on the damage front, but has actually taken a back step in terms of matching Angel. Angel has been getting a lot of free reign across the map, and I'm actually quite surprised about this. You know, Scout was our third best mid laner of the LPL, and I thought he would have a He's bit like more of a leeway over Angel. Mm. Turns out that Angel, you know, coming into the split, going 8-2 and two in his first 10, 10 games, has a lot to prove. I want to uh, say that's just a fake. A lot to... He has a lot to prove. Uh, okay, okay, there we go. Yeah, that's you're the correct right. <laughs> Clement, you're right. He does have a lot to prove because for Angel, remember, you talked about 2018 playoffs on the side of Sooning. I also look at like 2019 and what a year it's been for Angel because he came in very late to the roster. Week he seven. came in over over Biel Biel. Yes. And that was like, okay, late addition. What can he add that Biel Biel cannot? And we got our answer very quickly. Definitely. And I think Angel, the next step for Sooning is to make Maple into a top laner or get another top laner. It feels like that's the trajectory that they're going to be going okay. for. I, I know you had that smile. It hurts my soul as a former I LMS I mean, they're both fan, mid laners. They're both top laners, yeah. I guess. You're right. But I, I do think they need to have some dedication. You know, V5 had the same track where they had Windy swipping, switching back and forth. And then people realize he only has three champions. And yeah, then that's right. It's not working. sustainable, right? <laughs> yes. It's definitely not sustainable. So 
I mean, it's very late to be thinking about that because we're in playoffs and this is like the do or die for Sooning and EDG. I think Maple has more in his hands. But so that's yes. what I'm hinting at. I yeah. think Maple has more picks that can support different types of compositions. So what we've seen already is we've seen EDG blue side twice. Uh, if you missed out on the discussion, side selection three out of the five games with the highest seed. Highest seed in this series is EDG. So now we go to game three. And from what I heard, I don't think EDG has picked their side. Okay. So I'll be curious at how things change up and what side Sooning actually prefer because if we're talking about that side selection, I'd look at Blue and say, that Silas first pick is so valuable for the side of Sooning. Exactly. I think this is a matchup where both teams are going to go for Blue side. For Sooning, it doesn't really matter if their uh, soul lanes are going to get countered by Red anyway. Like, sure. that's that's just going to happen based on the skill difference. So I think they are going to hard uh, hard go on to, to, to the Blue side. And they have a number of champions that they're very powerful with. The Olaf is something that yeah. we have to mention that they banned themselves on the Red side, but now on Blue, they have the chance to take it. Both Hacker and Weiwei are great Olafs, and Sooning with an early lead are a lot more lethal than they are from playing in an equal position. Also going down the ladder, it's uh, it gives it, it's a lot easier to pick a solo lane flex pick when you have that first pick. Yeah, it really is. So, do Sooning choose it? Because the expectation is that they would be the ones making side selection this time around. Now. Uh, I, I heard you talking about the carry potential you want to see out of Sooning this time around. I like that because SMLZ in high pressure situations demands more protection. That's yeah. literally what you will call for. This is basically SMLZ's MO. That's true. An 80 carry who we still rate very highly. So there is, I was going to say, there was there are bangs in the buck. It's more like there are. There's more than just the words for SMLZ is what I'm trying to get at. That this AD carry is still one to be respected and that iBoy versus SMLZ is a hype matchup because uh, both are respected here in the LPL as top tier. That was the biggest question coming into summer. Were Sooning going to decide to invest in the bottom side of the map with SMLZ or were they going to go with Longxing in the top side? And at the end of the day, it turns out this is an SMLZ team that they are going to get most of their damage, their output from SMLZ. And, you know, I think this is a great chance to go back and inspect that decision and see if it pays off. Spirits are high there and Sword Art is a very happy person. I know you did a face-to-face -face in spring. It was actually your first episode of face-to-face -face, yeah. where I got the luxury of meeting Sword Art as well and he's a very positive guy but right now we're taking a closer look at Jinu and, and Clement I'm going to rely on you again. Okay so we see Jinu having five kills by 15. Uh, <laughs> most of his kills Wait, happening earlier on. This series? This series yes. Oh. Uh, I think I believe it was the previous game. Excuse me. I believe this series anyway, but there's still a mighty fine number, and if that's just within a game, that's even better. So it's time to see if Sooning have prepped for this type of composition. It would Not, think so. I will say that for Sooning, even protect the hyper carry comps are a little bit rare in their matchups. Yeah. Uh, in their uh, in their history this split. Since we're talking about week seven onward, their top lane champion pool has still mainly been carry. So they've really been transitioning between one three one compositions and these early skirmish catch type of compositions. So I remember I remember when on that note, when we had Bu Bu and we had Sooning try at like the Cogmore composition. SMLZ a very weird build to start things off. But two, it was like, it wasn't protect the Cogmore. It was like, throw him into the mosh pit and see if he gets out alive. And uh, you're yeah, right, it's not Sooning style. It's the, the side lane carries. It's the potential of SMLZ kind of slipping between them and proving his own worth. I gotta love VO5s. There's so many more mind games. You have to transition between oh. the matchups. And surprisingly, okay. Sooning actually going to go for the red side. Yeah, I'm going to get verification on whether EDG picked for game three, but uh, Sooning on red side again, third time in a row, we've got the same sides here coming into play. I guess if you're on red side and you get Jay Sakali every game, it's still kind of like playing on the blue side. <laughs> yeah. Very curious. Still just waiting for confirmation because if EDG picked blue side again, that's it. If, when we go to game four and potentially a game five, Sooning will be able to choose. So let's see what happens because we see the Akali again. It's rinse and repeat. The Gragas we talked about is first big priority for EDG. There's no way this Lee Sin's going to get locked in. Third time's a charm. Sooning still going for Hack the same off. stuff. He thought that was pretty funny. It's like, uh, Lee Sin jungle. I'd, I'd see a Kha'Zix on Hacker before I think I'd see a Lee Sin to be fair. 
really want to see what Hacker uh, picks up here. So far in the series, he's been the main initiation role for Suning, the main front line, yep. with varying results. So it might be the... Ooh. Uh, ooh, they're breaking it up. Yeah, they're taking away the Rakan. They're not going to leave the Xyrakan open for the third time in a row. It's very interesting from EDG. It gives them a lot more initiation potential. In the past two games, we've seen Mako be very quiet on that front and rely on the success or failure of Jiji to kind of carry the game. I like that we're seeing Eye Boys Kaiser alongside with it this time as well. So, Kaiser Rakan, the potential of Nautilus on the side, because Sword Art now has to change. And there we go. I gotta say, this is some of EDG's best compositions. It, it combines all their skirmishing potential with uh, tons of crowd control. Everyone can go in. There's a big flashing red button that they can just hit and all fly in at the same time. Yeah. And it also gives them good team fighting in the later stages as well. I was so, say, yeah. uh, EDG, they, with this composition, the most dangerous comp I've seen is when everyone has initiations. Uh, if they throw in another Camille, which is open this time around, Ooh, that's true. It would be insanely deadly for EDG, which uh, is, for Suning. Which is why you see something like the Jace, and you go, okay, Suning respecting that, banning that away. Um, Scout also has the Aurelia. So does Jinu, actually. So the Aurelia in a composition like this could go nicely into the hands of one of those solo laners. Well, they are going to leave the Camille open. Mm, okay. Renekton instead. Very interesting. So EDG, I think they're going to take away the Sejuani because that takes away the team fight composition pretty much from Suni. There's no better frontline tank at this point. So you might as well just deny that possibility altogether. Scanner ban from Hacker. Are we going to get a different jungler once again? The Jarvan was looked at last time. I would be okay with that Jarvan, to be honest. Do we get a Sejuani ban again? I think I think they just take Sejuani out again. Aatrox. Okay. Hmm. Now, Clement, your face changed a lot there. What happened? What, do you, what is your thought now? Well, I I think the Aatrox is... So we've been seeing Suni just pick the Aatrox in the fourth pick uh, over and over again, but I don't think Aatrox on Maple has proven to be a difference maker. It hasn't been incredible. It's been good, but not great. Yeah, so I, I would have much preferred the Sejuani ban here. And if you're going Jax anyway, that's 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 a Aatrox counter. True. So with that in mind, Jinu's going to go back to GP. Now, although the likes of Maples played GP mid, not expecting that, Jinu will once again pick that up into the top lane. And what is a safe mid lane blind, considering you don't know what Maple slash Angel are going to be playing yeah, this game? Yeah, I, I don't like this drafting strategy from EDG, because you're basically leaving a mid lane open to be countered. Uh, remember, the Akali for Suning can still be played in the top side. Oh. But thoughts on Vladimir, Clement. All right, so a much more team fight focused composition. This is what I was guessing that Suning would go for. Uh, what we're looking for is most likely the Vladimir into the top lane versus uh, versus the game blank. Yep. Akali still mid with a kill threat. And Vladimir is a champion that even in, in the laning phase, it doesn't have the greatest of matchups against game flank, much more influential in the team fights. And Sejuani was kind of gifted over to Suning to allow them to start that 5v5. If you look at Suning's composition, this is what we were talking about, much better frontline this time, yeah. a lot more protection for their AD carry to deal damage and a heavier team fight focus as well. So Suning basically got, uh, I, I think Su this is the correct position for Suning to be inside of the matchup. On the other hand, for EDG, even though Scout has proven to be a great Azir, I'm not that sure. Bot side again. We got bot yeah. side focus, Clement. Yeah, we got bot side focus, but I, I'm not just that sure Azir can leave lane as easily. True. And the Azir plus Gragas uh, combo is not that powerful. It, it's very easy to, to just kill. Azir cannot leave lane easy uh, easily. And what this will allow is for uh, for Angel to have a very similar start to the previous two games where he's just leaving lane where Scout cannot catch him. I'm interested though, because if we're looking towards the bot lane again, even though you're talking about the Azir not being able to leave lane as easily, you've got the GP on Juno once more. And that's what the problem with game one was, that it, it got flipped. Yep. Game one got flipped on EDG so easily. And you look at the composition from Suning, I mean, that can happen again. Yeah, I, I feel that way as well. And this time around, EDG does have a lot of late game answers. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Suning's end, they have the they have the same comp, and it's stronger stronger earlier, and it's almost also more consistent late. You want to see the best? Suning and EDG heading back onto Summoner's Rift here for Game Three. Let's see who breaks away and moves to match point in our first round of playoffs.
His name's Harold, by the way. Isn't that confusing? There's a Harold in Harold? Just realize that. Donald. Okay. Donald, Donald the, the duck. duck. No copyright intended. Crowd out in force here in Shanghai. Now, we're in the Hong Chao Arena once again. As, yeah, we're getting to look at our wrestling superstars. Cesaro and Xavier Woods making themselves known here. And Raz is in the middle. <laughs> I just love that, like, these two really shredded guys. Definitely enjoying And then this there's time. Raz. Not saying that Raz is not <laughs> shredded, but let's be honest, not as much as two wrestlers. I would consider Raz very twiggy. <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself, man. <laughs> I know there's going to be, you know, some tricast in the future is, wow, Maple. That's that's a big issue. Yeah, you typically don't do that as a Vladimir in this matchup. Uh, game Plank, just level one, is incredibly powerful. And he's, he's, he's got normal potions here as well. So with the Doran's Ring start, as you started to see, and that's already one pot gone, and you're relying on the sustain, which Jinnu is not going to let you get. He's also going for the Doran's ring start of uh, type of build. So he will have to look to trade some cues back onto the game plank if he wants to sustain back. Ooh, Sword Art has been very cheeky here with the dredge line. SMLZ getting traded back by Eyeboy. And bottom lane already shoving up here for the Zai. Sorry, the Kaiser Rakan level one. Is must so, suck being a lover and being on the wrong side. I have to say this is Suni just playing safe uh, in the matchup. You definitely should see Suning's composition uh, bot lane actually have an early game lead in terms of priority. Okay. But they did spot the jungler on the Raptors, so they know that JJ is pathing downwards toward their own lane. They're actually both here at the moment, Clement. JJ yeah. is towards Krugs, and he's going to be finished that. Then the option of going up to blue, but imagine setting yourself up for topside the way it's going. EDG have a really good path here if they choose it. And of course, when you go Predator Gragas, you can back here off the bottom side camp, move up top, and that could be a really easy dive. Yeah, we could see that developing in the top side already. And uh, this is something that we were very worried about for Suning come playoff time. Just the Jinu versus Maple matchup. Doesn't really yep. sound the best. I mean, we didn't know. And the thing is, we didn't know. It could have been Angel versus Jinu. Uh, we've had Maple versus Jinu quite a lot so far. So Angel's back in the mid lane against Scout. And this sucks. Oh my god. This pirate is ready. Look at that. This is a flash auto away oh, from kill. Oh, stop it. He's got he's got trial by fire. Oh, oh, it was an observer bug, but he flashed. He succeeded. And Jinu solo kills for first blood. Wow. You, you really don't see first bloods happening in this matchup whatsoever. That is... <laughs> Off that level one trade we saw. I mean, one thing leads to another, and Maple, Maple is being outclassed in this lane. And I uh, can't really... I, I don't really blame Maple much, but this is the uh, the case when you swap your soul laners around a lot. They just don't have that much experience in the individual matchups. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen that really happen. Not not before level six. I mean, a gangplank versus Vladimir. Like, well, there's a bit of range there. Sustain for the Vladimir. Bottom lane getting hefty as well. It's mostly at half health. Iboy make a really good trades here and sort of not able to pull him back for another the wave crashing in. And a lot of options for JJ this game is. Yep, that's a sheen first back from Jinu. <laughs> Watch him, ready? Oh, you want to sustain, you want to sustain, you want to sustain. Don't think so. He's already got this lane frozen. Nothing oh, Maple can do God. here. <laughs> this is the gangplank game where, you know, you're playing with your friends at home, right? <laughs> and they're watching you and they're like, oh, you're playing gangplank, are you a good gangplank? You get that first blood and then suddenly boom. As oh. SMLZ. Speaking of which, you're going to flash down the bottom side. Now Mako couldn't get trench line in. He can't get back to his AD carry. He has to flash the heals there Hacker's from Highboy. And Hacker, will he be able to make the dive happen? Asuni pretty much have to kill this bottom lane. Their top lane is They need a knock up and an instant flash there. Highboy flashes away as well. They get the knock up underneath. Tart so the Tejuani, but Sword Art is taking away the turret. He'll survive while Highboy is actually out playing this. What the heck? Now JJ is coming in and he knows, Sword Art knows he's going to die. Yeah, Flash, you better run. <laughs> Great play there coming in from EDG's bottom side. iBoy with a good Flash to dodge out of the Winter's Wrath and then is able to return all the damage right there. Soon he got the support, but the rest of the people could take up the tower. I want to see this again because the 
Nautilus was taking the aggro, the Sejuani got knocked up, and I boy survives after what was a very well timed flash. Yeah, that was pretty much uh, Suni hitting the panic button. Their top lane was nearly unsalvageable. Maple had to back. Uh, just because he was under threat of being killed by a game. Yeah. The, the wave was frozen up, he's down 20 CS, he's like, I actually just cannot stay here. They have to make something work on the bot side, backfires completely. Yeah, and now, you know what, with two kills going on Eyeboy, he picks up the early pickaxe, looking for that upgrade as soon as possible, and the build into the Man Immune, the Gwinsus. With that, and a Gangplank is so far ahead with Cannon Barrage, EDG is set up for success after this sick outplay. Ooh, we get the POV from Ibo as well. That was a great dodge on his part. And oh, wow! The supercharger. Gets away from the blade collar too. Damn. That was sick. Clement, you know I'm putting that in the pen thing this week, alright? No problem. Sick okay. play from Ibo. That was sick. Two and zero, Kaiser. And then our eyes go back up to the top lane, right? With this bottom lane building up. With Cannon Barrage now available. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. EDG have a 1.5k gold lead. And the map is theirs. As Frostburn used to say, you know and I know, the dive is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you said she was the EDG expert. Now, Clement, I wasn't here in 2018. But I did watch LPL. And I know the passion, the expertise that comes in with EDG. When you see an EDG like this, that's how you know. That's when you understand why they've been successful each and every year into making that world's run. It's just insane how consistent they actually are. And I, I'm not going to talk about this because this is just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, continue you, on. You think about all the successful teams in the uh, LPL, like OMG, WE, IG, they've all fallen out of relevance mm -hmm. at one point or another. And even RNG faced relegations. Yeah. So, EDG is incredibly remarkable for how they are relevant every single split. It's truly amazing to see them as an organization, and they've got a great transition this split as well. One of the youngest teams in the LPL, even though they're one of the oldest organizations. I mean, JJ just starting over Clear Love. That is a big achievement in itself. As Juno just finds Hacker, he's like, no, this is my control ward. Let's go. Trial by five, and Angel's coming in now. Juno half health the Sejuani, <laughs> and he's going to take that control ward with him. God, he's uh, eating a vampire. He's, he's got some pork to go with that, too. Clement, he's 30 CS ahead in that top lane. That Sheen is going to turn into a Trinity Force very soon. And he's not even getting the, the blind pick here. Cool. Angel pushing himself forward. Has himself a perfect execution. Now I'm going to sure can flip back home. Excuse me, not even getting the counter pick in these matchups. That's true. Jinu's just straight up styling on non top laners. I bagged his gangplank. I regret it. As, okay, SMLZ gonna ult immediately. That's a lot of respect shown to EDG's bottom line. I think SMLZ was told by the coach just to flash when he's in danger. <laughs> yeah. Use your summoners, use your ulti. Let's when not are lose you early. Saving your, your summoners, are you saving them from 2020? <laughs> For next year, climate too. <laughs> well. He uses his ult, he gets out. That's the main thing here for SMLZ. Now he's behind about 14 CS in this lane, but every single lane here is winning for EDG. Mid lane ahead by 20, top is 30, and that Vladimir's against the turret, while JJ has so many lanes to pick for. He's bottom once again. He's denying Hacker from getting in. Yeah, what he really needs to do is at least get a kill onto Scout. Uh, the Azir is not running any form of cleanse, so he should be relatively open towards ganks. Top lane, I don't know, man. I, I feel like top lane's a lost cause. I would not be surprised <laughs> yeah. if Jinu just kills both of them if the gank goes down. Sure. I will say, uh, that was some good trading there from Maple, even though he's so far behind. If he gets the Crimson Rush on the champion, the sustain is so much better as we're just getting a little POV. It was Hema Blake that burnt down Jinu, but yes. he's back up with the oranges. I, I wouldn't call that a great trade because Jinu actually held onto his ultimate. <laughs> that he did. Okay. 1,300 gold advantage. That's a lot. Where else? 400 in the mid lane. 700 there. Yeah, give it to Jinu. Oh, oh yeah. Man. This is the bank plank. Yes, it is, Clevichu. Yes, it is. How many, how many dollary dues are invested right now into Jinu? I'm pretty sure he's gonna get that Triforce before 13, which is the uh, usual standard for uh, kleptomancy game planks. Actually, yeah. uh, he's grasping and dying, but I, I'm pretty sure he can hit the mark. <laughs> Quite easily. Components of the phage there in the top lane, while JJ hovering around. Now this is the back from Jinu. 
Let's keep track of those items. What is it? He's I, got a lot of he gold. He got 2,700 last time, so... Oh, he's oh. got it. 10 minutes. 10 minute 30 Trinity Force. Ready? Oh, no. That is the earliest Trinity Force I've seen in competitive play in a very long time. I've seen some nine minute ones, but... All right. Sure. Look, okay. Okay, okay. It's I'm early. not going to go into the competition. It's early, okay. Oh, stop it. Oh, my God. God! You rarely see in competitive where a lane is losing so hard, the jungler just refuses to come whatsoever. He's just like, I need to get in the bottom side. I need to get mid. Where can I go? I have ulti. Jinu's, Jinu's hunting for maple. <laughs> this is literally Pirates of the Caribbean number one. When he's fighting Barbosa, and you're like, Jack's going to win this, but when? Uh, we want to see the extra gold he's going to get off the Krogs. There's 10 <laughs> units underneath Krogs. <laughs> We're just stuck in the top <laughs> lane. This is playoffs and like, I, Suning like, nah, nah, definitely does not feel like it. I hope Suning still have Biu Biu on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> Maple is getting tested. Hackers in the top lane, but you said it before. Wouldn't be surprised if we go for the 2v1. As bottom lane, they got oh, other ideas of EG. Catch. Instant ult, yeah. They get behind SMLZ. Ibo gets knocked up, but it doesn't matter while Jinu picks up the kill. The gameplay got it with the ulti, Clement, no! He got another kill, and now he's looking for Maple. He flashes on in, Hemoplake at the ready, and he gets that one with Trial by Fire. He didn't even ult in his lane. And That's Hacker's coming up. Hacker, is. no. Hacker, you cannot do this. He is level 10. You are level 7. <sighs> oh, Jinu. God, this is so painful. I wrote... I wrote that piece about Jinu that you saw on the break screen. Yeah. This man has not been to Worlds. This man, as you said, is making his debut in playoffs. And finally here in game three, we are getting the best of him. This is not even fair. It's like smurfing. He's not a top laner. Yeah. Send someone that actually knows the lane. Who knows top in suiting? This game, nobody. And you know what? EDG just got an infernal dragon. Oh god, this is this is gonna be a swift and brutal game from EDG. This is done diddly done unless Sooning finds something, and that's gonna rely on Angel here with the Empress Fight coming out. Sword Art comes up to Rome, scouting in a lot of trouble, fails to flash over the wall too. That's what you need from Sooning. The other lanes need to start winning. Yeah, good job there. Uh, the concussive blow, uh, not the concussive blow, just the stun coming in from uh, from Sword Art to yep. lock him from going over the wall. And this is exactly what they need to do. I think Azir is the point you attack here. But first off, we're going to watch Mako and his perfect timing on this one. Wow. Yeah, right behind him as well. Yeah, iBoy going in from the <laughs> back on the kill. And SMLZ is like, well, I guess I blade caller the Gragas. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, New this technology. is nifty. But look, trial by fire. <laughs> 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 oh, no, even gets the hex trinker. Look, Jinu didn't need it, but there is no way that Vladimir ever does damage to him. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like this is just against Angel. He's respecting the Angel rather than the Vladimir at this point. Yeah. He could just go for his crit items, but got to play it safe. Angel's had a great series. Yeah. You know, Angel has been the shining light of Sooning here in the series now. Uh, for Hacker coming through, game one was a lot about him, but this game is going to really test Angel, really test Hacker, the communication for Sooning, because if they can get more mid lane picks, then they can counter the growing threat of the gangplank top lane. I think Sooning really just picked Forky early next game. Uh, most likely. <laughs> okay, so you're looking towards the next game. That is fair. This is... <laughs> oh, that GP ult does a lot. Yeah, the minion wave is dead here. Now, SMLZ and Sword Art needs to leave. But Junu just got solo turret top as turret plating has just expired. Now, Rift Herald mid. This is the EDG we wanted to see, Clement. You cannot deny it. It definitely is. Swift and brutal, great laning phase. That was the number one team strength that we highlighted for them. Third best laning oh phase God. overall in the league. This could go down as well. Four members are mid, and Junior's still pushing top. He's getting crunk. Oh, that's that the initiation. Busy. That's the engagement to Jeje, but there's no follow-up from Suning. Mako at the ready. Suning really lack oh, wave dear. clear at this point. They're having SMLZ just farm up and try to be the hyper carry. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. You ever played Slender? I know a lot of people out there played Slender. When you get to eight pages, sorry, seven pages. You mean Slender Man? Eight, yes, and he appears every uh, second. You walk guess. around the, the whole map, you are petrified. Do you know this game is Slender Man at bat, <laughs> right? When you hit the maximum amount of pages before winning, you know he's there. You just don't know when he's gonna strike. I want to see him outplay a 1v3. I think that's going to happen. He's 70 CS up, but he's got two items at 15 minutes. They're not cheap items as well. 
He's going to outplay a 1v3. Yes. And I want to see it happen. I want to see Jinu finally getting showcased in playoffs. Yes. Because EDG, like, this is how the run starts, right? And we go back to a bit of story here, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, EDG did not go far in spring. In fact, they picked up no championship points. Meaning if they lose this series or the series afterwards as well against BLG, if they can make it, then they will not be attending Worlds for the first time in five years. The organization's history. EDG, much like Suni, they need to hit third yes. to have a chance to get into that uh, gauntlet going forward. Sooning, similar situation. We talk yep. about SMLZ, his experience and his ability to go to the world stage. As JJ. Okay, good, perfect execution. The flash over from EDG's jungler. Angel follows it and he sees Mako and he goes, nope, that was enough. As long as it isn't game playing, they can kind of stay in these fights for a while. Where is he? Yep, camera go there. That's all that matters this game. Oh no. SMLZ, are you ready? Are you ready for the barrel plus parlay one shot? He's level 13. <laughs> he's three levels above Maple. And he's four levels above SMLZ, so that's going to be real fun. This guy is Commonwealth Bank Gangplank. Shout out to any Australians who know exactly what I'm talking about out there. I it, have no idea. You know, one of the most popular banks, Clover. Good interest rate. <laughs> Uh, I would like to invest in a Jinu myself. Okay. This is the gangplank you want in your solo queue. Is Iboy actually just ults? Mako follows him up as well. That's great. Engage into the shroud. Angel gets knocked up and back he goes. As he'll take himself a huge chunk out of the W. But EDG go back to the turret. They know what they have to do here. Let's keep pushing out. Yeah, and for Suning's game plan, they're still looking for the 5v5, but they need to postpone that. The orange heals minutes. more than the transfusion with Crimson Rush. And that's only a level one orange. Yeah, that's true. I actually love the voice of uh, Chinese Gangplank. I will say I went to Disneyland while I've been here and I went to the Pirates of the Caribbean road uh, ride. Yes, yes, they do have Disneyland here. It's actually oh, not far I, from us. I, I was asking for Gangplank. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, no, they don't, have, they don't have League of Legends at Disney. Although that would be a cool crossover. Be we have a lot of skins already that look very Disney, close to Disney. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> But some of our champions as well has have the Disney feel. Lawyers aren't listening. No. Nope. Swerve away from this. If, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not here, you know, for the next couple of series, you'll know why. <laughs> have but, machine on standby. Uh, Disney over here is cool. You know, like uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, I'd recommend to anyone as Angel's oh, now gonna find prediction. himself. Yeah, Jinu's there. He's like, where are you? Like a shark in water. Angel gonna get poked out and look at this. He's not scared. <laughs> Suning scared. They're running, running they away. They are. <laughs> They're getting out. It looks sort of was like I'm here just in case. This is moral support, but you should still back off. <laughs> this is when you look at Jinu and say, "Where has this guy been?" And I can tell you, he was on LGD. We've talked about this already in the series, but the uh, top like, laner who plays the unique ribbon pocket pick, for a good reason, you can see he's mechanically gifted. Yeah, Jinu has been on the edge of being kind of a meme lord in the LPL for a long time well before he had his good start on V5 in Spring Split. Yep. And with that, he found finds a spot into EDG. Sooning are trying to take a 4v4 four fight, and you can't blame him. That's what they want right now. It feels like that's the only option. Definitely is the case. I think the main problem for Sooning right here is they never really found any ganks to get their composition rolling, and, and just the top lane way too far out of control. Oh, wow. They might actually find Angel here. Oh, burn immediately. EDG, it's the ward entering that brush as the counter engage comes through, but Angel gets burnt down. He's wow. on Ignite. Eye boy ults in and finds the last tick. That was great by the bottom line. Yeah, great find. Great target selection right there. Really good job by uh, Angel, but still can't get out of that. Clement, important announcement. We are approaching Flame Horizon for the Gangplank at 19, 20 minutes in the game. He is 5 CS away. You remember that move that Zoom pulled on FBX? Yeah. Where he had a 4,000 damage barrel? Oh, that I'm was... I'm waiting for that. Oh, I'm... wait a minute. Uh, we get a team fight. Dredge line comes through, but Scout just takes down Hacker. It's so easy. EDG, charge board, get another turret. They're now 10k gold ahead at 20 minutes. And let's bring that scoreboard back because, yeah, we're getting close. Come on, Junu. 6 CS. Oh, he's going to get scuttled. That's four. You know what hurts even more? Spotting out the Flame Horizon. <laughs> Watching Angel come in here. Really good body slam on uh, Jidja's part. He actually predicts Angel coming back. Oh. Oh, Hi boy, perfect. having a much better series. 
Much better series than what we used to at Ivo in the end of the split. And in small moments like that, you're like, wow, okay, pulls the trigger. The aggression's there. Yeah, much what we know about iBoy. So, Clement, here we go. There's Baron. It stares down EDG saying when. It's the only real question we're asking at this point. EDG, they do have the enough sustained damage, you know, percent health damage on the Kaisa as well. So this will Ooh. be a relatively fast Baron. He's got the Flame Horizon, Clement. Congratulations, He's got it. Jinu. It was only a matter of time. This guy was known as the Immortal Sword for playing Fiora and I Riven remember, and yeah. Solo Queue. He's really well known for being one of the first ones to play the old Aatrox as well. Oh, yeah. Also is Quinn. So he's played a lot of weird stuff, but hasn't had that successful of a career uh, on LGD. But had a breakout split last time around. It's hard when you're in the shadows of Acorn and Mara, and two exceptionally talented top laners. You get, then get your position as a starting core member once they leave. I believe it was in the middle of 2016, and uh, he had to step up, and it's been the growth spurt ever since, where you're now to this Jinu, where the solo carries there, the two item gangplanks there, Clement, I'm waiting for this next pack, because uh, this is like the Yomus I'm expecting, maybe the He's far ahead essence. enough. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> That's almost 6,000 gold. Oh God. He's got 3k gold. He just bought something outright. Observer, let's tick. What is it? I don't care about iBoy evolving. Colonel! <laughs> the Colonel just, just wants to see iBoy. He doesn't you know, care. 99% of the time, we want KFC. That's fair. We have cravings. Right now is not one of them. I would like to see... No. Good. Oh, my God. God, wow, he's bought out so a spirit defensive. visage. Yeah, he's defensive. Who needs to be defensive? But to be fair, that's a Vladimir and a Kali who will do no I damage. I respect it. Just wanted to see something more fun. He still there does damage. He still does enough damage, not as much as he would, but Maple now. Oh no. He flashes on in SMLZ. Gets that's the one star. Can he yeah. get two? They're going to lock him down. They want Jinnu. The Heaven Plague does nothing. And look at him. He presses on for the explosive cast. Misses here as the rest of EDG come into pounce. 1v2 straight in, Flash gets the solo kill onto SMLZ. And this time, even SMLZ used his Flash early, still couldn't live. I guess he doesn't do as much damage as we'd like, but he can't die. He stays around for a he, while. He cannot die. He's the front line now. Look at I this. Am the captain. Angel, you want to go? Go to Jinu. Look at him. Yeah. Angel has to flip over the wall while Jinu's like, how's that? Bang, bang, bang. Walk away. Baron's going to be EDGs. And look at that. Yes. <laughs> That's Gangplank for you, Jinu burns him with Trial by Fire and Mako just wants the final tick as EDG, 14k up with Baron. Congratulations, Jinu. It's finally here. Our boy has finally grown up. Level 16 at 23 minutes. There goes the inhibitor turret. Right now, Sooning are just sitting down and going, well... Let's try and get this to a game five. The question really is, what does Suning even have in the top side that can go up against the likes of Jinu? This was a blind pick game plank game. There are counters in the meta that exist, and it's just like, you know what? I, I know you don't have the champion pool to face this. He's got two upgrades on his cannon barrage as it well. He should be 7,000 gold ahead of Maple, and yep. it could be the fact that you could put two Maples in his current form right now, and they still wouldn't match up in gold compared well. to Compared to Jinu. You ready for this, Clement? Walk me through it. Uses the <laughs> ultimate, lands, still gets hit. Great timing on that one. Oh my god. And dies with the cannon barrage. He 1v3, essentially, walks back in. And we don't get to have a look at him. I oh, want to yes, see the 1v3 again. Ah, this is the sweet stuff. That was really good barrel placement. Looks at look at he splits. The solo laners with the barrel in the brush, even though it's visible, still can't oh get out of it. Oh my god. You're like, ah, I'll get out before it ticks over to, to one. Nope, he's got a BF, he's got a pickaxe once again. Now that is an infinity edge on the way. And he just hit level 16 off of that, so mm -hmm. the uh, you know the, the timers for your barrels do does go down. And cannon barrage as well. Yep. Uh, max rank. So with the spirit visage, with the more. Trinity for, I mean, he's got a bit of cooldown reduction now. All right, Jinu, here's the hit squad. This is go. the movie I want to watch. That's 1v4. the old out. The flash in from Nautilus. They want Jinu. They're using everything. The gameplay launches the bell. Oh. Wow. Doesn't matter. SMLZ is going to die here because JJ wants in. 
Uh, he's still not dead just yet, but oh, back should line, not Eyeboy's there looking at SMLZ. He wants to back away. They haven't spotted him out. EDG have taken down two, and that's because those barrels did half their health. EDG clean up the rest. And this should be a sweet finish for both teams right there. Sooning defeat the raid boss, and EDG finally <laughs> show what they're capable of. Yeah, but the raid boss took them down so damn low. Now has an infinity edge, but I don't think we're going to get to see it this game. Clement, long death time is here, and this one has been a spanking from EDG. They'll head on to the first Nexus turret. They'll look towards game number four with match point in mind. And this EDG looking pretty damn good, SMLZ. We'll test to that. And Hacker sent back to the fountain as even Scout is getting himself, well, a death in the end. And they're just playing with our hearts at this point. Iboy hit the Nexus because EDG are going to match point. That was the biggest top lane difference I've ever seen in the LPL in my casting career here. I don't think we've seen anything quite like it, even from the Shy. Well, the great. amount of total domination just scaring away the jungler from even And I mean, going we've seen Amazing J have some pretty, you know, questionable games against the Shy, right? Yeah, that, that trumps it completely. Ibo looks like he's in a dream. He's like, <laughs> did I even play anything? <laughs> Feels good, man. Like, Jinu just a thumbs up. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, he's smiling. I uh, gotta hit him angles, man. That's great. <laughs> Perfect camera timing for the LPL. Oh, this must be a dream run for Jinu, and now all he needs to do is to cap it off. I yes. don't think Suni has an answer for him whatsoever. Even if side selection goes over to Suni, he most likely is gonna get a counter pick in the remaining oh, games. Oh my God. <laughs> 22,000 damage. 26 minute game, and Gangplank scales really well <laughs> definitely does he definitely does so you're right they don't have it they doesn't feel like they have an answer i'll tell you one thing though that's for sure jinu will not get gangplank in game four the problem is it's not even about his gangplank gangplank isn't even what he's known for <laughs> no but the gangplank was still scary he's a very good gameplay by the way just think about what happens when he actually gets a counter pick what do yep. you do then if you're just picking vladimir blind or picking Something like the Akali blind. What do you do when Jinu comes for you? You mm -hmm. like Suni are running out of bands to target the top lane. Sure. They did Camille and Silas in all of their previous games just to stop Jinu from going off, and sure. he still does so anyway. I mean, top side of the map, you can say now EDG have changed their plan in mind, I guess, but Jinu did that for them. Yep. Uh JJ third game in a row on Gragas was like, yep, okay. Everything else is going well. Three winning lanes across the board, not much more to say than that, and Suning just got collapsed upon. That was a 14k advantage with half of the gold lead on a single person, mm. and the game finishes before 26 minutes. Right. That was most one-sided stomp, and honestly, why we keep on saying EDG are the favored team on paper. They're we, heavily favored. I was going to say, we thought this was going to be like a 3-0, 3-1. If we got to that point, now we're in match point here for EDG. We're sooning, you know, had a good couple of first games. But after that, it's like, okay, the experience in solo lanes, we question how that can the matchup will actually happen. We got a really good answer this time around without jungle interference, without any pressure in, like in that top lane. The 1v1 goes over to Jin. <laughs> Two solo kills and there, the, the second one without even the cannon brush. Yep. Yep. I, I believe the MVP. If the MVP is doesn't go to Jinu, I'll actually go there myself. The only Razzle thing that might that. change around here is that for game four, we might see a switch in side selection because mm -hmm. all three games so far have been EDG on the blue side and then Sooning on the red. Yep. So if Sooning can get a power pick while they're on the uh, on the blue side themselves, maybe they can shake up the dynamics. Silas, as we were talking about, a massive game changer here, especially for Maple. I think that's probably his best yeah. top lane champion. I'm questioning what's going to happen with Sooning here in this game number four because it's make or break time for their playoff run and their chance at Worlds. We're going to have a short break when we return. Like said, game four and Jinu's MVP. <laughs>